Hi everyone. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about Right to Work. Uh, how Right to Work came about, what it is, and the current status of Right to Work today in the United States. <clears throat> As you can see, uh, compared to uh, previous video lectures, I have shifted the focus of the camera to put the bookshelf in the background because I wouldn't be a good academic if there wasn't a bookshelf in the background, right? Um, so, right to work. The, uh, uh, the, I'd like to start a little bit before right to work, actually. So, the National Labor Relations Act of 1935, also known as the Wagner Act, was passed uh, under the Roosevelt administration. It's a federal law that that uh, uh, aimed to protect organized labor, and uh, it did so by banning company unions. So your employer could not set up a union for you that would, of course, then lean toward the company's interests. Uh, it also banned employers from uh, refusing to bargain. This is called a duty to bargain. So, so it established that employers had the duty to uh, bargain with employees. This all came from the Wagner Act, and this was uh, uh, something that was very pro-labor, very, very pro-organized labor, and really helped strengthen uh, labor unions in America in the following decades. So much so that critics were saying that the, the pendulum had swung too far toward labor unions that labor unions had become too powerful and they were preventing uh, em employers from, from being employers, from operating their businesses as they see fit. So uh, the response to this was a piece of legislation called the uh, Labor Management Relations Act of 1947. This is also known as Taft-Hartley. This was passed uh, by a Republican Congress under um, uh, President Truman, who was a Democrat, and uh, with enough support to override a uh, uh, veto threats from, from the president. So uh, what, the, what the response was, it, it was meant to take power away from uh, labor unions, and what, what uh, Taft-Hartley did was that it banned closed shops, which uh, which means that labor unions would have less uh, power over who could get hired into the workplace. It required labor union officials to sign affidavits that would uh, uh, state that they're not members of the Communist Party, because there was a lot of worry about communist influence within the labor movement at the time. And then uh, most importantly for today's lecture is that it opened the door for states to pass their own labor relations acts uh, known as right to work laws. So uh, now states could then pass these right to work laws that uh, took power away from labor unions and it would uh, uh, what right to work laws do is that it makes it possible for individuals to opt out of paying labor union dues, even if they are still covered by the collective bargaining agreement. When I discuss these issues with students, a lot of times there's a misconception that if you don't pay the labor union dues, if you opt out of the dues, uh, then you're not covered by the contract. That's not, that's not true. So if you opt out of the labor union dues, and you're still covered by the contract, you're in a, in a, in a place of, a, of employment that negotiates uh, collective bargaining agreements, you still get the pay raises and benefits that are negotiated by the labor union, you just don't um, pay the labor union dues, you're not a member of the union. Uh, the, the way that labor unions responded to this is by creating fair share or agency fees, which we can discuss at a, at a different time. Um, uh, because of recent uh, implications with Janice v. Ask Me, but that's not the focus of, of, uh, of today's discussion. So uh, uh, in the, the, the argument for right-to-work laws was that, 
was that uh, people people f were being f uh, forced to join a labor union, forced to contribute labor union dues to a group that they might not necessarily agree with, and that they didn't want representing them, and and that they didn't agree with them politically. So. Uh, uh, proponents of right to work laws argue that that uh, right to work protects an individual's right to represent themselves in the workplace and um, their freedom of association. Uh, arguments against right to work laws uh, are that it, it it weakens labor unions and when you have weaker labor unions you end up with decreased wages and uh, uh, working conditions that uh, hurt workers and decreased labor uh, uh, living standards for, for uh, all workers. So uh, that's right to work in a nutshell. The, the uh, current state of right to work as of uh, today, we currently have 27 states that are right to work states. Following the passage of Taft-Hartley, 10 states almost immediately in 1947 adopted right to work laws, uh, one of them in, including Georgia. Uh, the most recent states to adopt right to work were uh, Wisconsin in 2015, West Virginia in 2016, and Kentucky in 2017. Uh, so roughly half the, uh, the states in the, in the nation, a little over half now, are uh, right to work states. And, and the, the uh, implications of that are that, uh, uh, you know, so proponents would argue that you're creating a, a stronger business environment that will uh, uh, keep wages a little lower and attract uh, businesses into the state to open up plants, you know, building automobiles or whatever, uh, widgets. The, uh, the arguments against it are that states that are not right-to-work states tend to have higher uh, higher wages and better benefits. But uh, you know, I leave it up to you to decide what the trade-offs are with right-to-work. But that's what it is, and that's the current state of, of right-to-work uh, as of uh, today. Uh, thank you.